Welcome back. Growing up in the mob, we've seen it in shows like The Sopranos and movies like The Godfather, but unless you were actually there, you do not get the whole picture. And my next guest was there. His father, Joseph Colombo, was the head of the Colombo crime family, one of the five families of the American Mafia in New York City. He took over the family at 41, making him one of the youngest crime bosses in the country and some say the first one born in America. During his time as head of the family, he faced threats from the authorities and other families, made alliances with some very famous and powerful friends. He started the Italian American Civil Rights League and actually helped the Godfather movie eventually get made. On June 28, 1971, he was shot in New York's Columbus Circle. He survived, but spent the rest of his life paralyzed. His son, Christopher Colombo, had a front row seat for his father's life. Uh, like his notorious dad, he's not an easy man to get a hold of, and he does not give a lot of interviews, but our terrific guest booker tracked him down. He said, nobody finds me, but you found me, so he agreed to talk with us tonight, and I want to thank uh, Christopher Colombo for joining us. We really, really appreciate it. First of all, I mean, this is just fascinating. Uh, what was it like growing up with such a famous father? He didn't realize he was famous, and uh, uh, it was very normal family. Uh, you started realizing when they arrested him at the FBI and your brother Joseph got arrested on fraudulent charges to get to your father, and uh, my father taken myself, my sister, my mother, and went down to the FBI headquarters in 69th Street and was kicking at the door saying, you know, take us all, this is your tactics. And that's how the Italian American Civil Rights League was born. Joey later gets acquitted, because we didn't even have to give a defense. That's how poor the prosecution was. And you say it felt like a, a normal family, but at what point, um, Christopher, did you realize, like, oh, I, I'm not in a normal family. This is definitely not normal. Well, when people that you're watching on TV and learning about in school are, are in your living room. Right. Uh, <laughs> right. Kahani, Martin Luther King, Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., T. Grace Atkins, and so on, you know. Yeah, I guess that'll, uh, that'll make you realize it. What do you think, Christopher, about words like the mafia and the mob? Well, first of all, Joseph Colombo said there is no mafia, and there really isn't. That's a word that's used to paint and stereotype the Italians. The mafia is an abbreviation that was formed in Sicily, which means to get the French out of our country. So they may have Italian organized crime like every other ethnic group, but the laboring and stereotyping has haunted Italians forever. Did your father want you to get into the family business? Did that ever come up? No, absolutely not. What do you do now? What do I do? I do financial consulting. Uh, I raised my kids for the last eight years. My case that took forever. I was under five years house arrest. Took after serving search warrants, took them three years to come back and arrest me. Uh, I beat every count except one. They threatened to take me back to it, and I went to jail for making a TV show, making fun of them. Oh, so what, I mean, with the last name Colombo, you mentioned your kids. I mean, do they realize their history? Do people put two and two together when they meet you guys? People never not put two and two together. They've been branded in the press so much, and, and the stereotype has been so significant. It's one of the reasons I'm sitting here with you today. That was one of the things Joe Colombo tried to stop. For his children, for other Italians, for me, my children. And now you continue that. We see shows like and movies, Goodfellas, Godfather, Sopranos. You mentioned the well, stereotypes. Are those shows accurate? Or what do you make of them? You want to know something? I think people actually emulate the movies and, and transform to them. The, the people of my father's era were very, very good family men, good businessmen, gentlemen. They didn't curse, they didn't drink, they didn't do drugs, they didn't smoke, and they held their morals very, very high. And, and they, they, they wore who they were on their sleeve. So, speaking of shows, your father's a character in the upcoming season of the show, Godfather of Harlem. Um, did you get to give any input? I mean, when these shows are made, do they call you and, and you know, uh, get your take on things? Uh, it's one of the reasons I'm talking to you to today is what they do is when you use people who've passed away, real life experiences and their names, you have an obligation to tell the truth. And the Paramount's portrayal of uh, uh, of the, uh, the offer, the only thing that's accurate in that show was the beginning and the end. Uh, I don't know what they did there, but they really dropped the ball. Mickey Cohen wasn't around, he was in jail. Tommy Lucchese died uh, three years before the book was even written. And my father loved the book and he loved the movie, he helped them make it. 
So your father was shot in 1971. I was talking about that yeah. in the introduction to this. Do you still have questions about that? I mean, are there still, is a lot of it still unanswered to you how all that went down? The COINTELPRO division of the FBI, he was making the deal to back off the league and the Italian people. They said they won, we'll never pinch you again. He says, I'm not doing it. And uh, he refused and they says, you know what we have to do? And he says, go ahead and do it. And uh, it was leaked to us that it was coming. We knew it, it wasn't a shock. And he says that uh, the only regret he had is that we would see him fall on his mother and his sister, who he loved dearly, all of us. So do you actually think like the government, like the feds killed your dad? Not this, no, I don't want to say the government, I don't want to say the feds, I want to say the COINTELPRO division, the FBI. There was a division, a secret division, which uh, if you read in the article that the New Yorker did on me, and they did it also, they also did uh, 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 an article when they stole these, these files, they were, they were uh, a, for, uh, a, a sector of the FBI that was designed to go after radical groups and disrupt them. They were next to Martin Luther King trying to commit him to commit, uh, convince him to commit suicide. Wow, that, that's disturbing to think about. Um, how do you think the mob has changed? I mean, we don't, we don't really hear about it the way we used to. Um, what do you make of that? Man out of people to put in jail. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess that's a good, that's you a good know, response. Like that. Yeah. When I'm in Colombo, so they should move on to the next ethnic group as an escape goat. All these, Pretty much everything said it's come to be. All these years later, what do you think your dad would want his legacy to be? Good father, good husband, good brother, good friend, 100%. Well, Christopher Colombo, uh, thank you so much for coming on. As I mentioned, you know, you're not an easy guy to get a hold of, and I don't think we were necessarily expecting you to say yes. But here you are, and, and we appreciate very, you coming very on nice tonight. Thing. I come from you, you know, you accommodate if you can. And my condolences goes out to the family of those, those children. Broke my heart to listen to that before this. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, it's an awful thank story. You. Thank you for the network. It's very nice people. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for coming on. And uh, we are going to have more Banfield coming up right after this. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.